Hello everyone, this is the Classic Homesteading Practices, and today this is going to be introductory to chickens. So for anybody who wants to get into chickens, this is the starting information that you need in order to have them. So this is the main list and topic points that we are going to be talking about today. First is infrastructure. Second is supplies. Third is the chicken types and breeds themselves. And thirdly is making sure, again, that you have everything to take care of them and make sure that you have healthy chickens. So, the infrastructure that you're going to need for them, of course, is a chicken coop. You are going to need the proper amount of space for them, which is two square feet at minimum per chicken inside the coop. So if you want 10 chickens, you need 20 square feet. If you want 30 chickens, you need 60 square feet and so forth and so on. Now, there are controversy for people saying that you should do three square feet minimum per chicken and so on. And what I say to that is it all depends on your preference legally and also by agricultural definition for uh, companies for a hen to properly lay without problems. It is two square feet. I personally, as a backyard chicken owner, have six to eight chickens at a time in a 20 square foot area. So it's at least at minimum two to three feet per chicken. Plus they also have a yard to run in or they free range while I'm outside with them. So you also need to take into fact that they need a chicken run where they will be safe from predators. They also need to free range if that's something that you want to do for them. You need to take into account what your land space is. Um, you will need to take into consideration the fact that you will need a large fence if you do not want to clip their wings. You will need to have a feeder and a waterer. You are going to need mealworms or a type of protein source for them to pick up because they love bugs in their natural diet. They are also uh, vegeta- or they love eating vegetation. My apologies on that. So they will be pecking at grass, at dandelions, at weeds, at flowers, at anything and everything that has some kind of standout color. They are going to grab it and they are going to eat it. So if you are ever concerned about something being poisonous, a chicken will find out for you. They are also very susceptible to having things conk them in the head like walnuts or fruit because they like shady areas underneath trees. So that is something to be concerned about. Um, they also like to fly and roost in trees. So if you don't want your chickens to roost in trees, or you don't want to have to try and shoo them out of trees, make sure that you have your infrastructure away far enough from a tree so that they can't fly in there again if you don't want to clip their wings. So the next thing that you need to think about is making sure that they have the necessary amount of food and water. And what do I mean by that? I mean, depending on how much... Uh, food and water is dependent on how many chickens that you have. So a full-grown adult hen is going to be eating about two pounds a week of feed. So if you have a budget and you say that you want to only spend $40 worth of feed, which is about 80 pounds of food up in Alaska, then you are going to have at maximum 40 hens which is a lot of chickens you really don't need that many unless you're doing a production scale so when it comes to feed it's not that big of a deal I will say this you should ration your chickens feed because they will be gluttonous and they will eat as much as they possibly can even if they have a nice large yard where they can forage 
chickens are notorious for just, you know, eating past their full date, and they grow very rapidly because of this. Uh, it is how production meat birds are made, actually. They just keep getting fed food until they're fat enough that they tip over. Um, but the difference between a layers pellet and a growing finishing pellet is also protein, so that's something that you don't have to usually worry about, but if you are ever concerned that your birds are getting too big too fast, ration out their food, everything will be fine. Other things that you need to take into consideration when it comes to food is having meat snacks for them, and I mean that by bug snacks, so mealworms, grubs, are a fantastic way to give your birds treats, along with them snacking in their yard. Um, other things like scratch, which is corn, barley, wheat that you can throw in with a regular food pellet. Um, oh, and of course, food pellets. When they are chicks, you are going to need to do a chick crumble because pellets are too big for chicks. I put this in as a disclaimer because sometimes people will accidentally get pellets and they feel like it is fine until they see their little itty bitty chick mouths are unable to actually grasp it. So make sure that you have chick feed. There is a protein difference as well. There is a calcium difference as well. And so it is very important for you to get the proper feed for your chick's stage of life. When the chicks become juveniles, that's when you can switch over to layer pellet. Usually you can go all the way until they start laying, which is about four to six months. That's when you switch them over to the layer pellet, which again has a boost of calcium, um, which has a higher protein by about 2%. And it is just a overall larger food for the chickens to peck at. And it's a lot less messy compared to a crumble feed. Other things that you need to also include in their diet now because they have started to lay eggs is giving them oyster shell or a calcium supplement of some sort because if you don't do that, they will be unable to properly make a shell. And what happens is your bird is going to either produce a soft shell, which means that when it comes out, it's very spongy, it'll tear, it's not fully formed crackable shell, or there won't be a shell at all. And you'll just have a wet pile of yolk and clear mess in your, uh, in your laying beds. So that is a very important thing that you need to remember to have for your hens to have access to all the time. And also, the last thing that you need to remember to have is grit. Grit is stones that chicks use all the way up to hens for grinding their food because chickens do not have teeth. So when you get your chicks from the pet store or from your local hatchery, make sure that when you bring them home that you have grit for them so they can properly digest their food. All right, so you have the infrastructure, you have all the food and water that they need, you have the oyster shell, you have the grit, and now you need to pick out your chickens. So you go to your hatchery, you look at all the chicks, it's a wonderful sight, you see all these little fluffy things, what are you going to choose? How are you going to choose it? It's the hardest thing and yet the easiest thing to choose out because they all And the only thing that I can really recommend to you in this moment is trying to figure out the types of chickens that would go good in your area. And the reason being is because there are heavy set chickens and there are light set chickens. And the heavy set chickens will do better in northern climates because they are built for northern climates. Their combs, which are the red 
skin on the top next to their beak will be shorter, so it is less likely to catch frostbite. They will have shorter waddles, again, for resistance against frostbite. They will be a rounder body chicken with a nice thick plumage, so if they ever accidentally get outside in a very cold weather, again, less frostbite. They are very resistant to the cold. These usually are brown egg layers, and they are fantastic dual birds. What I mean by that is that they are good for egg production and for meat production. Though, there is a catch when it does come to egg production. Brown egg layers tend to lay a little bit less depending on the type, unlike white egg layers. But the reason for this is, is white egg layers are usually one lighter in weight, so they aren't the best meat birds, but they are fantastic for egg production. They will usually have one to two eggs laid a day. If you decide to lay year round, they will keep going all year round without missing a day, and they will produce for you until, well, until they expire, which is a very nice way of saying until the end of their life. Now, you have all these different types of birds. You have the reason behind it. Now you need to figure out, huh, do I live in a hot place or do I live in a cold place? Do I need these birds for production or do I need them for meat? Or are they for fun and I just want to have a couple of chickens that lay beautiful eggs so they can be pets and fun? And that is the nice thing about having chickens is that they're so versatile in the way that you look at them that they're never just for one thing. So. My recommendation for people who want production just for eggs mainly should get leghorns. They are a white egg layer, they are a large egg layer, and their production can go from one to two eggs a day. They will lay 350 plus eggs a year, and if you decide to again lay them year round just make sure that they have a light inside of their house because chickens need 10 plus hours of light in order to lay eggs every day the other one that i would recommend for production is um whoo you got me on a roll and then i just immediately lost my train of thought don't you just love when that happens? So the other one is Rhode Island Reds. They again lay over 350 eggs a year. They can be a one to two egg layer a day. They are a brown egg layer, so they are heavier. They are a great dual purpose bird. They were made specifically for that reason. They are good for mainly cold weather, but they also do really well in hot weather. So for a person who lives all the way up in Canada, Alaska, all the way down in Arkansas, Arizona, Leghorns and Rhode Island Reds are really good ones to have. Cinnamon Queens are another one that work well, and Orpingtons. And the reason why I put Orpingtons in there because they're not necessarily the best egg layer. They are usually a 300 to 320 uh, eggs a year, but they are very docile. They're very loving and they're very easy to deal with. So if you have a production area that you need eggs and you need meat, it is a lot easier to wrangle a chicken that is docile and is more willing to come to you than you chasing it around your yard. So, now that we've gotten the egg part under control, let's go over to a dual bird or a meat bird. 
I would go for Jersey Giants for meat because those birds can get up to 10 to 12 pounds depending if it's a rooster or a hen. They lay approximately 300 plus eggs a year. They are a brown egg layer. You also have Sussex, which are beautiful birds. They are a seven to eight pounder bird and they lay around 270 to 300 eggs a year. You have Marans. You have red stars and black stars. You have Americanas, which are actually a lovely bird because they are a blue egg layer. You have Australorps and then again Orpingtons. And the reasons why I specifically pick those ones out is because again they are really good dual purpose birds where they will give you at least 250 plus eggs a year and also they will give you around 8 to 10 pounds of meat from a hen you can even go farther up with a rooster if you want strictly meat production so you have your egg laying birds you have your your dual purpose birds your meat birds now let's talk about your pet birds now this is definitely a place where I fall into because even though I'm a homesteader, I also love all of my animals. The thing about me personally is I am in love with all of the animals that come through my home. If they are in my home, they are treated with the best of ab my abilities. So I know that I have good meat in my freezer. I have good eggs on my shelf. It is the reason I have a sustainable, independent home for myself. So I know that my food is ethically sourced through me. So I prefer to go ahead and have pet birds that do blue eggs, green eggs, chocolate chocolate deep brown eggs and these birds are americanas they are olive eggers they are marans in specific cuckoo maran and the reason why i decided with those is because again they're specialty egg layers but also they are dual purpose birds i am also getting sussex which have a beautiful pink brown egg but again they are very heavy set girls I am also in a northern climate which makes this even better for me for the fact that these girls were made specifically for my area and I know that they're going to do well even when it gets down to negative 10 20 30 degrees so I have specifically picked my birds out for my area for my needs. And that is what I'm asking you to do when you decide to go to the hatchery or you look in the catalog and you see what you want to get. So now that you have all this information, what you need to do for infrastructure, what you need for supplies for them, what kind of birds that I have recommended to you, the last thing that I have to say is just making sure whether or not you want to keep your birds egg laying producing year round versus letting them molt and having a regular life cycle. Now being able to have a year round production you are going to need a light for at least 10 plus hours a day and you need to make sure that it is warm enough for your chickens to produce because if it is too cold for them they will not lay you also need to take into consideration that the life cycle of your chicken will drastically shorten because there is more likely uh, complications and problems that will arise because your chickens are going to be producing more often and this just means that you need to be okay with morbidity. You need to be okay with surprise chicken deaths through abscess eggs, infections, uh, improper vent problems that arise on the chicken's back end, and sometimes compact that you're going to see. Um, so when you decide 
that you're going to do this, just keep in mind that you are going to have to deal with chicken morbidity. And the life expectancy of your chicken will go down to two to three years. On the other hand, if you decide to give your chicken a regular life cycle, which I understand for some people is not something that they're able to do. They have children that they wish to uh, have two, three eggs a day, and they have 10 chickens, and they have contracts that they need to fill with bakeries and other things, so their chickens produce constantly. But for people who are doing this as a fun practice, there is other ways to store your eggs for months at a time. You can pickle them, you can uh, just keep them in a cool, dry area, you're able to can them, and so forth. The life expectancy of your chicken, if you do that, will jump up very high. And what I mean by that is going from two to three years all the way up to eight plus years. You will be getting a lot more laying years out of these chickens, which means you will be taking care of these chickens for a long period of time. And this usually happens with people who have chickens who are pets. Now, the drawbacks of this is these hens are going to slowly stop laying eggs through a period of time. And this usually happens around five to eight years where they go from laying five, six, seven eggs a, every week all the way down to three or two. And that means that you just might have to make a stewed chicken later in their life, which again is totally fine. That is the part about farming and homesteading that that is a very hard thing for people to take into consideration is you are going to have to be their provider their lifeline and also their line to their next phase in life, in their ending of life. And we will talk about the humane way to take care of it. It is not hard to take care of it. It is something that you morally and ethically have to get into. And in all honesty, um, there are people who are unable to do it, and that is totally fine. We do not judge you for not being able to do that. But, for now, getting back on track, again, the life expectancy of your hen will skyrocket. Because chickens who are allowed to lay properly and in the means of their life cycle can last 10 to 12 years if they are allowed to stop laying altogether and they are true pets, they can last all the way to 15, even 20 years. And that is just the regular life cycle of a domesticated chicken. So, with all of this information laid out at your feet, you now understand that you need infrastructure, you need the supplies, you need the means of heating, and insulating a coop, and then at the very, very end of all of this, when you are supported and ready to go, that is when you need to get your chickens. Because the easiest part about all of homesteading is acquiring the animals. That is the cheapest and the easiest way. The hardest part is getting everything set up for them to be there and to sustainably live with them. Alright guys, I hope this information was good for you, I enjoyed talking with you, and I will see you on the next episode of Classic Homesteading Practice. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.